So, now we will move on to the shielding gases, shall we? Right? So, we looked at uh, the, the heat transfer characteristic, right? The conduction convection radiation. So, you should recall all the time. So, when you moment you say the selection of gases, whatever we learnt in the heat, heat transfer, it is extremely important to relate that over the selection of shielding gas. Okay, so, the, the, the function of gas in, an arc, in the welding process, primary function is to strike an arc, is not it? So, the gas, the shielding gas what you use, the main function you use it to strike an arc and then you can use the gas to protect the well pool. Okay. The shielding gas which you use is not only used for arc arc is a primary function, but secondary function again it is not only to protect the well pool. The shielding gas influences the various aspect of welding. Okay. So, it, it, it of course, it protects the, the atmosphere, but it will also can it will also change the well bead geometry. It can also change the microstructure. It can also change the fluid, fluid flow. Okay. So, the all these things should be taken into consideration when you are choosing a shielding gas. Okay, so, the primary function as I uh, uh, written down here to sustain a low voltage arc that is the primary function and then protect it from the atmosphere. But secondary the uh, functions uh, the arc can also influence the bead geometry and mechanical property. So, one classical example is use of oxygen in a, in a low carbon medium carbon steel for welding. So, we, we add some amount of oxygen with argon for example, to induce oxide inclusions. Okay. So, the moment you induce oxide inclusions, the oxide inclusion that where the acicular ferrite is nucleating. Okay. So, acicular ferrite are nucleated and the oxide inclusions, sorry metallurgy pardon me. Okay. So, you once you have the oxide inclusions, so you can uh, nucleate acicular ferrite and acicular ferrite if you have in microstructure the toughness increases significantly. Okay. So, that is one example I want to give or you can also use a, a high conductivity gases for example, hydrogen or helium to spread the well pool. Okay. So, by spreading, so you can also increase the area you weld. So, you can do a wider bead geometry well. So, based on your need by looking at the characteristic of the shielding gas, so we can choose which shielding gas you want to use for welding. Right? So, we look at one by one looking at the characteristics. So, by far argon is very widely used for GTRW. GTW is most of the cases is done using argon, right? And sometimes we mix argon with a diatomic gas, for example, argon plus CO2. Okay? Again, the CO2 can influence the heat transfer characteristic of an arc because CO2 is a diatomic gas, right? So, obviously, the heat transfer can be very effective. It was looked at because of diatomic uh, uh, dissociation and then de dissociation even arc heat can be distributed much more uniformly than if you use argon. Right? Similarly, if you use gases with high thermal conductivity, same phenomena can also be happening. For example, if you use hydrogen or helium, helium is highly uh, convective <coughs> gases. What do you mean convective? The buoyancy flow is very high if you use helium or hydrogen, is not it? So, the heat can be transferred very effectively. So, you will have end up in you will have making a very wider wells because the heat is spread, right? It is clear. So, we look at one by one the all the gases what we commonly use and then what are the characteristics and then to understand what gas you want to use for your uh, given application. So, you need to look at the physical characteristics of the gas plus the physics of arc. Right? It's clear. 
So, generally diatomic gases with gas thermal conductivity result in wider bead because of the effective heat transfer. Diatomic gases, the de dissociation can transfer the heat. Similarly, the convective gases, high thermal conductivity gases can also transfer it by effective buoyancy flow. And during this process, if uh, the arc, the temperature is widens, you also increase the voltage in most of the cases because the flow is diverted, it is not going and it is diverted. So, so obviously you end up increasing the voltage as well, system voltage. Okay, it's clear. Okay, good. We'll see one by one. So this is a classical example of the arc pressure measured over the distance, the diameter of the arc, by using argon and helium and argon. You see the difference already. So helium is highly convective gas, isn't it? The heat transfer is very effective by convecting convection due to the buoyancy. in helium or even hydrogen. And because of that, if you use only argon, so you will have the enormous amount of heat concentrating at the, the arc core. The argon does not, it is a monoatomic gas, it does not dissociate because it is an already atomic gas. So, the heat is not transferred effectively from the center of the arc to the circumference. Right. Whereas, if you mix say for example, uh, uh, helium and 25 percent argon, the helium would transfer the heat effectively from the center of the arc to the arc envelope and during this process, the pressure or in temperature would decrease significantly at the center because it is spreading out, it is transferring. So, now if you use the same welding parameter, you just change the shielding gas which would give deeper penetration. So, in this case, argon would give much deeper penetration because heat is concentrated, is not it? Suppose if you use the second mixture, your well bead will be something like this, is not it? So, now you can clearly see just by changing the shielding gas, you would change the well geometry. Right? So, if you use argon, so heat is concentrating at the core of the arc, so it will lead to a deep penetration very narrow weld and change it to helium which is convective gas or you add argon CO2 carbon dioxide, you will see the effect already. Okay? So, carbon dioxide which is also effective in heat transfer because of de dissociation. Okay. And a helium and hydrogen is also very effective because of effective convective flow. In both ways, the heat can be distributed from the core to the envelope periphery. Yes, it is clear and it is real and we have done experiments to verify that. So, in this case, so we use argon as a main gas and we added various gases along this argon. Okay, so, in the first case, we will start from here and this is argon only 2.5 percent CO2, it is close to pure form. You see that the very deep even the, the well pool is collapsed because of superheating, it is sagged, very narrow weld, is not it? So, now if we start increasing the carbon dioxide concentration, you already see the penetration is decreasing and then it is becoming wider, is not it? So, you again increasing the carbon dioxide, it is even wider, the penetration decreases significantly. Okay? And from here to here, we added the oxygen O2, it is even increases the well bead width and the penetration decreases. Okay? This is due to the, the from I already explained, because of the the change in the heat transfer of the arc, right? So, so this is what happens uh, when you have an argon or argon CO2. So the, the, the arc core 
it is very narrow in organ case because the heat is not transferred. So, there is no convective heat transfer, there is no de dissociation, the conductive heat transfer by de dissociation. So, you will concentrate heat at the core the maximum when you use a pure organ, so, right. So, you will have very narrow core and leading to the deeper penetration in organ. So, you mix with CO2, okay. The R core expands because the heat is now distributed by the de dissociation, dissociation. So, the, K, the KD term would influence the temperature distribution from core to the, the outer periphery. And during this process, the, so you will also distribute the heat leading to the wider bead and then shallow penetration. Same would happen so if you replace this with helium or even hydrogen, the then instead of KD, you will have a much more effective buoyancy flow, okay. Yes, because they are all very effective, the convective gases which have that is why they have we always say the helium and the hydrogen they have very high thermal conductivity okay, because of the convective heat transfer, effective convective heat transfer, right, it is clear the effect of shielding gas. So, you can you now immediately you know think about it, now you want to reduce the penetration, you see the weld is penetrating very high. So, so with argon, okay, let us add 5 percent CO2. Okay, so, obviously, the penetration will decrease, well bead width will be increasing. The you also you should also have significant uh, width, otherwise, the load will be concentrating on a very narrow region. So, the, the well width would also be the aspect ratio of the weld, the width to uh, the, the depth ratio, it is also very important, right. So, that is how we change the shielding gas in such a way that we change the well bead geometry. So, not only that, the shielding gases will also influence the microstructure generation, okay. For example, I earlier explained the oxygen will form oxide inclusion and that is beneficial to nucleate acicular ferrite, right. So, we will look at the one by one all the characteristic of the gases, then we will stop, okay. The first organ. So, organ is widely used for GTW, is totally inert and density of the air, it is very important. So, when you use organ shielding gas, it displaces air, okay. So, the air is displaced effectively when organ is purged because the density of the air. So, it has a very, it is a low ionization compared to helium, okay. Okay. So, therefore, the ignition, ignition is easy compared to helium. So, that is why when you are using uh, 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 the organ in GTAW, the arc ignition uh, facilitated by the electric breakdown or high frequency ignition because if you use helium, the ionization energy is high. So, obviously, Vb which we saw, it has to be even higher, okay. In high frequency ignition, so you need to increase the frequency even higher than what you use for organ. So, the organ is preferred for GTAW for this very same purpose because the ignition is easy, right, okay. Sometimes we add hydrogen mainly for stainless steels because stainless steels, so we need to spread, you need to weld it with the wider heat, the arc envelope. So, if you use organ, so you always concentrating onto very narrow region. So, we add hydrogen 5 percent, so that the heat is distributed as you make wider bead, right, it is clear. Can you use hydrogen mixing for uh, low carbon steels or steels, ferritic steels? Yeah, so we can't use. So, if you use hydrogen for welding low carbon steel, then you will be fired because the weld is going to crack by hydrogen embrittlement. 
Okay. So, P organ is generally is not used for GMAW. Okay. So, again the heat is highly concentrating at the R core, the melting characteristic of the filler cannot be ensured properly. Okay. So, GMAW if you use argon, generally you, know, you need to melt the droplet and then transfer it. The transfer characteristic is significantly affected by the, the R core, the shape of the R core. So, we will see when you are looking GMAW why it is very important. So, generally we do not use argon for GMAW, but nowadays uh, people use it because the control over the wire feed rate. Okay. So, in those days when uh, the wire feed rate is not synchronized with the power source and the waveform characteristics, the, GM, the argon was not used for GMAW. Okay, so, now we can control it, but mostly we do not prefer to use uh, argon. So, second is helium. So, helium is uh, very light, it is lighter than air. Now, we already have a problem. So, if you want to use helium as a shielding gas, flow rate must be significant to displace the air, is not it? So, argon it is densier than iron. If even if you send is reasonably low flow rate, it would still displace the air. But helium, you need to have enough pressure to push the air so that you fill the, the medium with helium. It's lighter than air. It's one of the two gases which can es escape from Earth's atmosphere. Which is the other one? Hydrogen, obviously. So helium, if you send uh, via balloon it would escape. Okay, so, I always feel someone uses uh, helium for filling balloons and fly it because it will escape. So, we will run out of helium for welding. Right? So, I would always discourage my children using helium balloons. No, no, I need it for welding. So, if you all of us send uh, helium balloons to atmosphere, it will go away to space. Okay, so, then we run out of helium. So, luckily we can produce helium in, uh, in in the earth itself, okay. So because the nuclear reactors, the final product is helium, okay. But that is very costly helium. So most of the helium comes from uh, the volcanoes. Okay, the earth's crust has helium. Okay, so we produce helium. Obviously, we also need a very uh, high arc voltage. Why? Because helium has a very high ionization potential. Right? Otherwise, we cannot sustain the arc ignition, is not it? So, it needs high arc voltage than argon and that would lead to obviously high heat generation. So, the helium arc would always be hotter than argon arc because when you the helium is ionized, it is ionized with very high ionization energy right. So, then the energy is released obviously the electrons which are coming out of the ionization process will also have a high energy and obviously high energy electrons are collided you also transfer the energy much higher than when you have when low energy electrons are coming out. So, this collision obviously lead to high temperatures. So, arc temperature will be always be, will always be higher than for example, if you use argon okay. All these put together will increase the heat input right and leading to a larger fusion zone. And there is one advantage because uh, you can also do high speed welding. So, you can also instead of uh, um, doing it slowly, you already have a large amount of heat. That means that you can do it slightly faster. So, the welding speed can be increased compared to argon. So, the cost you spend to buy helium bottle is compensated by welding in, in uh, uh, increased speed, right. But it is only production environment. It is also widely used for high conductivity materials because the heat, the energy, the arc energy what is there it is high, okay. The heat is generated in a high amount compared to the argon. So, in high conductive materials heat is dissipated so quickly. So, you need to supply more heat so that you can melt, is not it? So, for example, welding copper, helium is very widely used because it is a highly conductive material. So, you need to supply more heat to melt the interface, right? It is clear? 
helium good. So, then third commonly used gas is carbon dioxide ok. The carbon dioxide is a very active gas right. So, it also dissociates into oxygen and carbon monoxide is not it. So, this dissociation lead to reduction in our core temperature the same example I showed you. So, dissociation can lead to de dissociation elsewhere and during this process the heat can be transferred. So, due to that the R core temperature decreases because you are spreading the heat it is not concentrated at the core. So, the temperature is spread and this dissociation process also generate oxygen atom. So, oxygen can react with the molten metal unfortunately it can uh, react with aluminum for example, silicon. So, when you are using CO2 and if a uh, steel contains aluminum, the aluminum will be lost. The aluminum pickup is very low when you are using CO2 welding because uh, the aluminum would all go away as aluminum oxide slag ok. So, generally because of these phenomena the arc stability decreases because the arc core is not narrow. So, it is spread and you also create the more ions and decrease the ion concentration due to the dissociation and dissociation process dissociation process respectively. So, then the arc stability will not be there right compared to uh, no, monoatomic gases when you use in CO2. So, the, but the voltage will be higher again the same process because you are spreading like in the conductive gases. So, voltage will increase therefore, heat input will also increase ok, but the stability will go down significantly ok. So, using conductive heat transfer to increase the arc temperature the wide end rate arc temperature will be better than using CO2 ok that will give you much more stable arc. So, in this case the stability will go down. So, it is low cost carbon dioxide ok. So, argon plus CO2 mixtures are very common right to spread the heat in the arc. So, that we can you can reduce the penetration and you can widen the well bead significantly. Yes, it is clear. We look at two more gases and then we stop. Oxygen. So, oxygen is, is always used in mixture. You cannot do an welding with pure oxygen for obvious reasons. So, you will have explosion right. So, it is used widely to mix either argon mostly argon ok. So, it is known to improve the arc stability right, but again you have a diatomic oxygen O2 would lead to de dissociation and spreading and it will also influence the surface tension ok. So, that is very significant effect you would see in bell geometry, we will see in subsequent classes how the surface tension of the molten metal would change the bell geometry. When the oxygen dissolves it is known to change the surface tension. So, then the your fluid flow behavior will change. You may even change from the outward flow into inward flow by changing the surface tension as a function of temperature ok. So, we will see how. So, this is another function of shielding gas ok microstructure oxygen would influence the uh, the inclusion formation it will also influence the surface tension will change the geometry of the bead as well ok. So, you would end up uh, leaving uh, end up uh, oxidizing the highly oxidizing alloying elements you have silicon for example, aluminum. So, your well bead would be depleted of these elements ok. So, when you use an uh, 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 MMA W electrode last week one of my students uh, he came to me we wanted to add aluminum in the electrode we end up getting nothing the well bead does did not contain any aluminum. So, in a, in a metal metal arc welding it is uh, done without shielding gas because the CO2 is generate by dissociating the flux ok. So, you end up making oxygen and carbon monoxide and oxygen what is generated by the dissociation would eat away all the aluminum and aluminum oxide will glow as a slag during welding 
okay. And this process you also generate carbon and the carbon would also lead to the carbon would diffuse to the well metal and the carbon concentration can also increase okay when you using carbon dioxide okay. So, the oxygen is clear and then um, hydrogen. So, hydrogen is also known to increase the arc voltage again because of the convective nature and known to increase the heat input because hydrogen and its energy also very high okay. So, it is not suitable for ferritic steels for the same reasons what I explained the hydrogen cracking, coal cracking or hydrogen embrittlement. So, some cases it improves weighting because it also affects the, uh, the surface tension viscosity of uh, steels known to change. So, we can also use uh, these to spread the pool effectively for arsenic stainless steels is widely used okay. So, to summarize, so we can choose the sealing gases based on uh, uh, the material and then how good your geometry should be, the aspect ratio should be and based on that you can choose and it will also affect your productivity because whether you have, uh, you, you want to make an, a, deep, the, a deep penetration wells or the, the the faster wells or uh, if you want to weld it in a slow without filler and all these things would be affecting the selection of shielding gas because the shielding gas characteristics are determined by uh, the heat transfer characteristics we were looking at it and then the ionization, the arc uh, heat generation characteristics okay. So, we look at this table in next class and then we will end up here okay. Thank you.